did we play today, Hoss? We played. We played Red Faction Guerrilla. 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 Yeah, Red Faction Guerrilla. Yep. Um, this yep. is um, a game that's from Volition Entertainment. It was published by THQ. Yes. Uh, this game came out in two thousand and nine. Yeah. Wow. That is. Uh, this is an older game. Uh, this is not necessarily as old as some of the other games that we talk about. Right. Um, but this is a game that's actually been on my mind a lot lately because we're never going to see an, another one being made by Volition, which is pretty sad. Oh, really? After the THQ sale, the properties didn't go with it unless you individually bought the property. Oh. Um, so the company that now owns Red Faction is the same company that owns uh, Darksiders and a couple of other uh, of their big top tier uh, properties, uh, but they don't own any of the developers. Okay. All right. Um, so yeah, this is Red Faction Guerrilla. Uh, I'll give you a little background uh, on the series. Okay. Uh, at the beginning of the PS2's lifespan, um, there were quite a few games that kind of happened all at once uh, that were uh, from THQ and Volition. Mm-hmm. One of those games was The Summoner. Okay. Um, if you don't remember The Summoner, if you've ever heard, you know, seen the dumb internet video of, where are the Cheetos? <laughs> the Cheetos, that's, that's, where the, that, sum- that's yeah. the Summoner. And yeah. at that table, there's like a dude from The Summoner, and there's a dude from Red Faction sitting yeah. at the table, and uh, there's some other guys. Um, but yeah, what? and they also had a game called Red Faction come out. Okay. Red Faction at the time was one of the more expensive games ever created. The reason why was because the game used what they referred to as Geomod technology. Okay. The idea behind Geomod is stuff breaks. <laughs> oh, so, yeah. yeah. <laughs> say you're playing a first-person shooter, <laughs> like a Red Faction, if you will. Uh-huh. Um, and you need a card key to get into a door. Right. You don't have a card key. Right. The walls rock. So you... And you got a rocket launcher. <laughs> Shoot a hole. Shoot a hole through that. That's your card key. That's pretty all right. (laughs) Um, So that entire game was built around the idea that you were uh, basically freedom fighters on Mars. Oh. Uh, You had been treated very poorly, um, forced to work in the mines, and you were basically seeking your retribution. Okay. The cool thing thing about that is that the... uh, uh, they throughout the series they have flipped back and forth between who's the good guys and who's the bad guys. Oh, interesting! Because everyone kind of sucks. <laughs> um, <laughs> it's not a uh, it, it's not it's not a, a shades of gray kind of thing. Just everybody's really dark black asshole. <laughs> there are three forces at play in this universe. Yeah, uh, there are the red faction. Okay, who are the freedom fight the the impoverished miners the indentured servants sure. from the first game. Sure. Who end up getting corrupted later. Oh, okay. And then they're good again. And then they're good guys again. It, just, <laughs> it gets complicated. All right, yeah. Um, but there's also uh, the EDF, okay. which are uh, the... Uh, that is basically the police. Okay. On Mars. And then you have the Ultor Corporation. The, which is the big business a-holes, I assume. Well, the- and <laughs> to anyone who's played the Saints Row franchise... Oh, they exist in the same universe. Do they? Are they going to have a... Oh, wow. That's interesting. They still own the name Ultor. Okay, uh, yeah. So they can use Ultor as a corporation in Saints Row, okay. but they will never be able to loop back around. Oh. Although, the ties to Red Faction are very deep in Saints Row the Third because there was a movie being made in there called Gangsters in Space that took place on Mars. You were impoverished Russian miners. I mean, uh, uh, Mars, Mars miners. Yeah. Uh, and, you know, trying to basically reclaim your freedom. And uh, so that was one of the sidelines. There was even a, uh, a was DLC that was uh, gangsters in space themed as well. There you go. Um, very funny. There's very your, cool. There's your wink, wink, nudge, nudge for it. Yeah. <laughs> uh, you know, I, I I really enjoy that. So, uh, and they use the Altor Corporation uh, across most of their games, which That's I good. which I think is pretty great. That's pretty. Right. Um, so yeah. So Red Faction One came out on the PS2. Uh, very renowned for its time of having. Uh, uh, some pretty interesting multiplayer because of the uh, the destructible environments. Really hamstrung by the fact that it only had four players. You know, mm-hmm. obviously split screen only that kind of thing because of the era. This game came out in I'm going to say Aprilish of 2001. If you want to check, you can go ahead and do that. Um, it's do that. probably right around there. All right. Um, but that game was uh, pretty early in the PS2's lifespan, very important from a technology perspective. Right. Uh, the PS2 had launched with uh, a lot of what people felt were like unrealized expectations. Uh, there weren't a lot of really good tools. Okay. Um, yeah. 
for the system. So a lot of the games actually looked inferior in a lot of the way, uh, in a lot of ways to uh, right. uh, what was on the Dreamcast at the time, which was a vastly inferior system but had great tools. Yeah, yeah. Um, because all of the tools used to make games on the Dreamcast uh-huh. that they provided for you were all the no- uh, Naomi arcade board stuff. Right. Sure. Uh, that was tried and true, 10 years old, super easy to make. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, you were making games in months as opposed to years <laughs> yeah. in a lot of cases yeah. uh, if you were using the Sega Tech. Right. Uh, it's right. why Sega just had that murderer's row of fucking games for that thing. It's like, yeah. do they have a million development studios? No, they're all just making games really fast. Really quick because of this simple system that they have. Uh, it came out in on May 21st. 2001, yes. Oh, close. April was pretty fucking close. April was pretty damn close for that, so there you go. I've got a weird mind for this shit. Yeah, yeah, right. right. (laughs) Um, So, uh, so yeah, the game came out, uh, you know, fairly middling reviews. Mm -hmm. Um, It it was one that was lauded for its tech more than anything. Um, The sequel to it, Red Faction 2. Considerably better game. Uh, right. This actually takes place in some of the cities uh, that are on Mars. Mm-hmm. Um, it has uh, a much more industrial setting as opposed to an underground mine yeah. setting for uh, for a lot of it. Uh, I would say it's an inferior game from uh, from a gameplay perspective. They kind of turned down a lot of the Geomod uh, okay. for that game. They just had to yeah, um, because the environments were so much bigger and everything. Sure. Um, so it's like, yeah, like, you know, so instead of you being able to rip a whole wall out, it's more like, well, the windows break and, you know, <laughs> yeah. these bookcases fall over. And, uh, That's pretty cool. But right? there was still some moments of full Geomod in there. Um, but, yeah, so that was uh, much less wildly received game because you got to think when Red Faction 1 sold very well. Because yeah. it was very early in the PS2's lifespan. Yeah. There's nothing else to fucking play. It's like, well, Anamisha came out in January. Right. And I haven't had a game since January. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> so exactly. you bought that. Yeah. Um, but this game was much less uh, positively received, especially reviews-wise. Uh, it, if I had to guess, the Metacritic's probably somewhere around 65. It's right. It's uh, a middling game at best. Right. Um, some would say fair to poor. Fair to um, poor. <laughs> But, yeah, so uh, Red Faction 2, that ended up getting ported around a little bit, and then it just kind of went silent for a while. Yeah. Uh, after this point, that's when uh, the team at Volition went on to go make a little game called Saints Row. Right. Um, Saints Row came out um, within the first year um, of the Xbox 360's lifespan. I think it was, like, maybe early August of 06, so it was pre-Gears. You know, so people were still th- pretty thirsty for games to play. Sure. Uh, you know, one of the, you know... There were a lot of people who had a lot of issues with Saints Row 1. You know, it took itself a little bit seriously at times, but there was a lot of good humor in there. Mm-hmm. You could see they were on to something. Right. Yeah. Uh, so after the big success of Saints Row 2... Yeah. Um, Is that where they went complete balls to the wall insane? That's where they went fucking insane. Yeah, yeah, that's yeah. also where they pulled in the Altor Corporation for the yeah. first time. Right. Um, so uh, Saints Row 2... S- Tell me this doesn't sound like a game that is just an easy cash-in that should be a piece of shit. Yeah. Same city. Yeah, same city. No, yeah, I gotcha. But, same city. But. <laughs> most of the same characters. Yeah. Most of the same mission types. True. However, because. But it's the craziest <laughs> game! Because they just decided, let's do that game again, but have fucking ridiculous fun with it. Well, it, it feels like Saints Row 1 was a game that was play-tested to hell. Right. And they were like, no, more like San Andreas. And they're like, we want to make like a slapstick goofy thing. <laughs> and then yeah. Saints Row 2, they just went back and said, no, this way. <laughs> and you end up with Saints Row 2 that's a fucking yeah. insane it, video it, game. It, it is the... It there's, is. there's a part in that game where you blow up a series of meth labs. Yeah. And the building burns down and for the rest of the game... Half of the city is blanketed <laughs> in on smoke. Fire. Just, just blanketed completely. It's insane. It's awesome. It's madness, and it's beautiful. And it's, Yeah, and it's at some point we need to do a Saints Row episode. We should probably do a Saints Row Actually, I think I would like to do a series of videos yeah. on the franchise. Oh, okay, that'd be uh, all right. That'd be maybe good. not do four, because I don't really like four. Okay. You don't really like four? No. No, is it, is it just like too... Self aware, you don't really like the. Um, I actually liked yeah. a lot of the comedy in four. Okay. Uh, some of my issues are just gameplay wise. Okay. Like, uh, you never get in a car in four. Yeah, you never you're, get a you're car. basically a superhero and yeah. you can 
you just run at light speed and fly and all that shit. Yeah. And the thing I like about fucking Saints Row is, like, if you give me a car in a game, I want to drive it. Because, <laughs> dude, it's a fucking car. Yeah. I mean, you can still get in cars and whatnot, but there's no reason to, right? Yeah, because you can just... It's, it's you can more fly. of... Yeah, you can it's fly. more of a problem than it is an advantage. <laughs> yeah, like, why would I bother with this? Yeah, like, <laughs> when I can basically fly, why would I do anything else? Yeah. Um, so, yeah, uh... So, tying this back around, after Saints Row 2 is where Red Faction Guerrilla comes back in. Right. Um, Red Faction Guerrilla is one of the most interesting games I've ever played. Mm -hmm. So they bring back what they call Geomod technology. Geomod 2.0. Right. Geomod 2.0 is one of the most uh, interesting tech demos you've ever seen. Yeah. And it's probably one of the things you can actually see that sounds like a pejorative about Red Faction Guerrilla. Sure. This game is... A big tech demo. Right. And that's... Yeah. But that's awesome! <laughs> you, uh, but the tech is so fun! Yeah, it's, it's fucking perfect, too. Yeah. You start the game with a sledgehammer. Yeah. And this sledgehammer will rip a building apart. Right, yeah. And it's fucking incredible. <laughs> you get satchel chargers, rocket launchers, uh, yeah. phase cutters, all sorts of, like, yeah. ridiculous future weaponry. Right. Yeah. That is all designed around blowing buildings up. Yeah. There are, whole, like, most of the missions are about blowing up facilities. Yeah. And it's fucking great. Yeah, yeah. It's, it, um, it looks great today. Yeah. It runs on that Saints Row technology. As soon as you pick up this game, the sprint button's the right button. Mm -hmm. The inventory button's the right button. Yeah. It's, it's all. Everything <laughs> is appropriate. It's. Yeah. It's like a warm hug from an old friend, man. <laughs> I love this yeah. game. It's not like... It's so like those transitional fighting game things where all your shit's different, mm -mm. and they fucked with it. So yeah, no, I love the art design. Uh, I, I love the still art. looks great today. Yeah, color palette's great. Um, the the one thing we did for about uh, ten minutes when I came in was uh, try to blow up this one tower. You the mission was to blow up this one tower using one explosive barrel and three bullets. And yep. That's it. So you have a pistol that has three bullets in it <laughs> and a barrel. So what we found is that if we threw the barrel <laughs> at the silo, yeah. it would eventually start cracking the cement. Yes. Because the problem was, if we just sat the barrel there, shot the barrel, it would blow out like half, half of the of cement, it. and it would make the structure unstable, but it wouldn't collapse in time. Yeah. Uh, believe it or not, if you make a building unstable, it will eventually it collapse. It will eventually go. Okay. Yes. That's interesting. Um, but it's it's all about getting a building critical for those things because you need it to collapse quickly. Right. Um, so, yeah, like, it's it's a game of physics design. It's it's almost something like, do you remember when Half-Life 2 came out and it was a physics toy? Oh, yeah. It was, yo, yeah. we got physics. Yeah, exactly. We, and, we've got the gravity gun. Go have fun with that. You know? <laughs> yeah, yeah. And, and this, in the same way... It, it doesn't use yeah. a third-party middleware. They made this. Right. So even today, yeah. you've probably never seen anything like this. <laughs> as soon as I started breaking buildings with that sledgehammer, you went, Yeah. Well, oh, this is the craziest fucking thing I've ever seen. Yeah. <laughs> it's because it is. It is. It's great, yeah. And, you know, I, it's, I wasn't expecting it, because all you did was show me the sledgehammer. I assumed you were going to go find some dudes to, like, you know, knock across the, the map or something in some funny way, but you just started... Taking out this pipeline with the, just this sledgehammer, and it, it, it was just something to behold. You know? Much in the same way that all the bad guys in Soldier of Fortune Payback are like they're duct taped together. <laughs> yes. It's like the entire world is made of paper mache. Yes. <laughs> and you are water. Yeah, and you're just. <laughs> and you're here to fucking destroy this paper mache. You're flooding the whole thing. Yeah, and it, it, it seems like a really fun game. Uh, absolutely. Yeah, and the game does, and I'll, I'll I'll totally fess up to this, the game has, uh, you know, quite a few drawbacks. Mm -hmm. I think the story's kind of bland. Yeah. I think it's actually uh, probably stronger in the second game than it is here. Right. Um, the nice thing is it doesn't take itself incredibly self-serious. Right. It knows it's a game that's about fun. Uh, help me out. Uh... Voice actor who's in everything. Uh, oh, Nolan North. You no, the other no? guy. Oh, uh, Tom or uh, um, uh, Troy Baker. Yeah, Troy Baker, Troy Baker. is the uh, the main yeah. character in this game. There you go. Uh, this is pre Troy Baker being in everything. Yeah. Um, but at the, I guess they got him for a two for one deal because he's the main voice here and he's also the main voice in Saints Row the Third. Yeah, that's right. Um, so there's another tie between the universes. Yep, that's true. Um, and and there's a Nolan North uh, version <laughs> for that as well. Which I thought was great, because the selection is Nolan North. <laughs> but yeah, 
Um, yeah, Troy Baker, uh, he's the most voice acted guy in... And know, he does a decent games. job here. I mean, like, the, everything about this game like that I would describe in the edges that's not the best parts of this game, they're all still serviceable and workmanlike. Right. You know, the game really only has about five mission types. You know, one of them is go pick up this car and drive it back to this facility. Another one is be a gunman on a turret of this vehicle. Right. Another one is go blow up buildings. And those are the ones that you do first because they're the best. <laughs> yes, they're fabulous. And, uh, yeah. yeah. So I, there's there's not necessarily a ton of depth here, but, you know, it's very low impact. Yeah. Um, it's a game that you can just casually play yeah. for long stretches of time and not necessarily realize the passage of time. Right. Um, you know, this is uh, the, the open world structure of Saints Row has, until Saints Row 4, pretty much always been, we'll have story missions, there's maybe 15 of those, but to work up to the point where you unlock the story missions, you do X amount of side missions. Right. This is that structure. Right, yeah. So it's all these diversions that are in the world, like the picking up cars and blowing up buildings and all that shit. These are the diversions that unlock the main story missions. Okay. This is Volition's structure. Nice. Um, This, uh, you know, this is one of my favorite games of last generation. Uh, This is a game that you can pick up for, like, $3. This okay. is ridiculously cheap. Right. Um, do not buy the PC version of this game. Oh, really? Do not buy the PC version of Saints Row 2. Mm. Those ports that were made of those games are awful. Really? And even on the heaviest rigs, barely run. Wow. They're just broken. Huh. Um, it's... It's real sad. Just bad ports? Like, they just... Just they, poor. Yeah, yeah just, just poor bad. ports. Huh. And, you know, it's one thing that... It's it's really sad because, you know, Saints Row 2 is probably my favorite Saints Row game. I think Saints Row 3 is better in some ways. Yeah. Um, and I love this game so much. And on a really beefy PC, I feel like they would look so great. Yeah. But they just don't work. Yeah. yeah. So, it's... I guess, you know, you got to get a console version of it if you want to play it at all, really. Right on. Um, now, I'm sure if you're somebody who wants to download all kinds of mods, and I'm sure there's a community for it, I'm sure somebody's gotten it to work fine. Yeah, yeah. Um, but, you know, there's something to be said for going out paying three bucks for a disc, throwing it in your Xbox or your PlayStation, and it just works. Works fine. Um, but, yeah, like, you know, it. it sadly, uh, Gorilla is the only game of its type. Yeah. Um, because the follow-up to this uh, Red Faction Armageddon uh, that was released in... I think that was probably Christmas of 2011. Nice. Um, okay. Holiday 2011-ish. Okay. Um, this was It was getting right around the time of the downfall of uh, THQ. Okay. Um, that game was very, very reduced in structure. It was not open world. Yeah. It was a level-based first-person shooter. Right. They, the team did what they could with the budget that they had, but THQ, just, they were like, you've got two games coming out soon, Saints Row and this. Choose the one that gets the money. <laughs> right, yeah. <laughs> and they throw all the money at Saints Row the Third, and right. they did make a lot of good tech uh, for Red Faction Armageddon. That game has a magnet gun. Yeah. That magnet gun yeah. is incredible. Huh. It, you basically get the opportunity to shoot at an object as like an anchor point. Right. And then, and then another thing, and they collide. <laughs> so you'll have like two buildings slam into each other. <laughs> I, or when you said two things, I assumed like oh, a fire hydrant and a dude. No, you two buildings. You can yeah. select a building as the ah. thing. That's pretty all right. Yeah, or like a a giant propane huge tank. Yeah, and a man. <laughs> Boom, and a man. Shoot, <laughs> shoot the man and the barrel. Shoot the man at the barrel. At the barrel, <laughs> and you're good. Um, yeah, like you know, fucking uh, <laughs> lock it onto a dude and throw a car at him and shit. Like that gun <laughs> is great. That's fabulous. Um, I'll have to show you a little bit of Armageddon sometime. Like that game. Uh, okay. That game's a little bit sour in some ways, especially like it's a lot more serious and stuff. Sure. Uh, it, sure. it not being open world is definitely a bummer because the open world in Gorilla is massive. Yeah, just huge. it's huge. To drive from one end to the other is fifteen minutes, ten minutes. Wow, there you go. It's a long time. Yeah, especially uh, for you know a game that's pre GTA Five. You know, it's like yeah. come on, what's GTA Five? It's like what twenty minutes to get from one to the other? Maybe twenty five, something Give about that. that. Yeah, so yeah, that's pretty good. Uh, uh, but okay. yeah, it's uh, it's definitely one of the franchises that. 
I'm sad Volition will probably never get their hands on it again. You never know what's going to happen. Yeah. I mean, you know, nobody ever thought that, you know, Tim Schafer would ever get to touch Grim Fandango again. That's that true. Happened. That happened. Um, you know, companies go out of business all the time and rights go up for sale all the time. Or companies just look to shed off franchises yeah. uh, right. at, at, you know, specific intervals. So, um, uh, that's going to do it for this episode, I think. Uh, yeah. Hey, really good history about Red Faction there. That was really nice. Uh I, I, Some I, games I'm a little bit more. I, I appreciate <laughs> seasoned your, on. Yeah, I appreciate your seasoned history on some of this stuff, and uh, and my good date making up and <laughs> it was close. It was. It was pretty good. All right, May twenty two thousand one. My ass. <laughs> well, that's gonna do it for this episode. Uh,